Hello everybody. Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. Today's rock is this one right here. It's the darkest rock. It's really jet black. Jet black and a little sparkly. And the story of this rock is actually a story about war. A lot of people don't think that minerals and earth materials would have anything to do with fighting battles in war. Actually, a lot of wars through the history of our civilization have been fought because of the mineral resources of the earth. But this mineral, this rock, tells a slightly different story about war. Let me give you a closer look first so you can see what this rock looks like. As I said, it's black, 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 and very sparkly. You can see all those sparkles. Each of those sparkles is an individual crystal of, ooh, look at there's a big one up there, sparkling up high. There it is again. Um, these are all individual sparkling crystals inside this rock. It's very, very heavy. This is absolutely one of the heaviest rocks I've got. And it has one other property that's kind of exciting that I want to show you. This rock has another special property. I've got a geologist's magnet. This we call this a peg magnet, pen magnet, because it swings. And if it gets near something that's magnetic, it'll swing towards it. So I can take something like, oh, let's say our chalk rock, and I can hold the magnet up next to it. It doesn't move. It doesn't swing towards that rock at all. That's because this doesn't have anything magnetic inside of it. But if we take our rock of the day and we hold the pen magnet up to it, watch what happens. Whoa. Let's try that again. Closer. It is... Oops, magnetic. I was able to do this this morning. There we go. It's so magnetic, it can even hold my magnet, my pen magnet, upside down. This rock is magnetic. A real magnetic rock. And that's why we call the mineral that you saw sparkling in this rock, magnetite. The mineral sparkling in this rock is called magnetite because it's magnetic. Now the story about this rock is a little bit more than just about magnetite though. You can't see it very well, but there's something else in this rock. It's not just magnetite. There's another mineral in here too called corundum. And corundum is very hard. In fact, there's only one mineral harder than corundum, and it's one of the rarest minerals of all, diamond. We'll have to talk about diamond another day, but today I want you to know that this rock is a mix of magnetite, that magnetic magnetite, and also hard corundum. You can't see the corundum very well because it's very fine-grained. A rock like this, which is a mix of magnetite and corundum, gets another name. And that name is emery. This rock is emery, magnetite and corundum. And the story of this rock takes us back to a very scary and very sad war that was fought here in the United States. It was called the Civil War, and it was in the 1860s, the time when Abraham Lincoln was the president of the United States. And people fought from the north and from the south and fought against each other. It was a very scary time in our country. But what if I told you that this rock and where this rock came from was one of the things that helped end that scary war? This story takes us to Western Massachusetts, not too far from here. In fact, I went there with my kids a while ago and we collected this rock together. We brought our magnets and collected this. This goes to a mine, an old abandoned mine now. 
in the center, the western central part of Massachusetts. And in the 1860s, this mine was open. And it was one of the only places in the entire country where you could find emery. And what do you think people did with emery back in those days? It turns out that emery is useful because of its hardness. That corundum, harder than everything else except diamond, that corundum is so hard. And the magnetite's pretty hard too. If you take this emery and grind it up into a powder, it makes this black powder. And you can use that to grind and sculpt and shape things that are also very hard. Can you think of anything in a war that you might need to shape or sculpt or smooth that's made out of something hard? How about cannons and cannonballs? Those kinds of weapons, which is one of the really scariest parts of war, but to make cannons and cannonballs, people in those times needed hard emery to scratch and scrape and shape the iron, the iron metal into round cannonballs and perfectly rounded cannons to fight that scary war. And this was one of the only emery mines in the whole country. And so the North had access to this emery and they were able to make more of those cannons and cannonballs and that soon led to the end of the war. Believe it or not, this emery was part of the reason that the war finally came to an end. An end of that very scary part in the history of our country. Now it's interesting because you would never think, I wouldn't think when I saw a rock like this, I know it's, it's magnetic and I think that's super cool and it's very hard. But I would never have thought that a rock like this could be part of a war, part of ending a war. So sometimes the stories of rocks have, well, sometimes some scary parts. But it's interesting to realize how connected even the scary parts of life can be to some of the materials of the earth that are so beautiful in other ways. So I hope you liked this story today, a story about Emery from an old mine in western Massachusetts, a sample that I collected myself with my kids, and a story with some scary parts, a story about war. Sometimes wars have something to do with the earth resources that we have available to us. Something to think about. I hope you like this video, and I hope I see you at my next Every Rock Has a Story. Bye-bye.